I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm good. All right. Everybody here? Everybody good? All right. Copy that. All right. All right. Yo, Terry, what's good, baby? T, you can hear me? Terry, you can hear me? Can you hear me? Huh? You can hear me? Yeah, I can. Ah, all right, cool. Good, good, good. You, was, you going in and out a little bit. What's good, man? How you feeling? No, I'm chilling, man. Everything's good. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yo, everybody, welcome to the locker room. Once again, um, today is Monday, December 14th, and I just want to thank everybody for coming to the locker room. My name is PJ, Coach PJ, PJ the Closer, however you want to label me. And uh, welcome to Brackenville Books is the locker room. Um, so today we have, oh, wait, before I introduce who we have today, um, I want to talk about the rules of the locker room real quick in case everybody doesn't know. So the first rule of the locker room is this is not regular class. I want everybody to be here and be comfortable and talk basketball like we're in a barbershop or like we're in the gym or we in the locker room, right? That makes sense to me. <clears throat> so, uh, and, and, and the second rule to the locker room is everybody bring somebody. You know, the bigger the locker room community, the more information and knowledge we get a chance to share. So, you know, it's always a good thing to bring people in so that we could, we could, we could, uh, you know, strengthen our own minds and, and physical bodies while, uh, you know, becoming a better basketball player, gaining more knowledge uh, and things of that nature. So without any further ado, um, because I am a big fan of uh, a couple of podcasts and drink champs, I got to give my main man right here, Terry, also known as Agent Zero, the proper mm. welcome he deserves. This man is from Brooklyn. This man is a scoring machine. The only man <laughs> I know under five foot ten, and that's being generous. 175 pounds, that's also being generous. That's a scoring machine. Nobody can't stop him. He'll give you 45 on a Wednesday and give you 62 on a Thursday. This is my main man all the way from Brooklyn. <laughs> Agent Zero, also known as Terry Brown. Yeah. Hey everyone. Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> Good looking P. I appreciate that. Yo, you already know, man. I, one of the things that I wanted to do when I first started the locker room was make sure that I give props to all of the ball players that I know personally first. Yeah, yes, sir. You yes, know? sir. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. One of my favorite ball players of all time is my, my younger brother Tariq. He should be in and out the locker room soon, you know. And then you, Terry, uh, man. I hopefully we do. I heard you mention Jay Rich earlier. I hope we do get Jay Rich in 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 the, in the building sooner or later. My main man Evo need to check in. Um, yep, yep. You know all of the all of the hogs, man. All of the hogs. So yeah, T, yeah. man, what's up, man? How you doing out there, man? Tell us where you from. You know what your favorite point, uh, your favorite position is, and all of those things. Let the people know a little bit about you. Hey, yeah, I'm Terry from Brooklyn. Like he said, um, I went to high school in Brooklyn. Uh, I like to play the off the off ball guard, which is the two guard. Um, it's usually around a, a, a five ten, five eleven dude, but I like to be I like to play off the ball. You know, I like to score the basketball. I also like to play defense as well. So I All right, so consider myself good. a two way player. That's good. That's good. And I'm glad you said um, you know two things. One, you said. You like to score the ball, play the off, off uh, the off guard, and um, and two, we're gonna talk a little bit about defense because I know being a, a undersized guard, man, guarding bigger guards is a is a tough thing. You know, yes, especially it is. if the first thing they want to do is put you in the post. So and instead post, of exactly. instead of starting this out with offense, let's talk a little bit about defense and and how you deal with with defending bigger guards. Well, when you defending bigger guards as a little guard, you want to get. I personally want to get up close to them. If I, I feel like if I'm close to them, they can't really dribble that much. A bigger guard is usually taller, so he has to dribble higher. So if you're, if you're up on the guard, you, you control what he does. So that's a, that's I, like, a, yeah. I actually like defending bigger guards. It's pretty easier. That's a big gem that you just said. You said bigger guards, when they dribble, they dribble the ball higher. So getting up under them, um, under them yes get, that get, that to me that allows that allows you to control their movement their their offense when you're under them you control where they where you want them to go you, if you want to bring them to another defender 
or just stay in front of them. You control where they want to go when you're up under them. That's very true. Hold on, we got we got a little. Oh, here we go. All right, we had we had a couple of people in the waiting room, bringing them all in. All right, so what's going on now? All right, I don't need uh, for now. Let's just chill. Um, um, we 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 getting reverb. Beat it. Beat it. Yeah. All right. So um, yeah, bigger bigger guards controlling bigger guards. Um, I, I would I would think you know. The objective would be to to bring them into dangerous waters, right? So bringing yeah. bringing a bigger guard into dangerous waters. What is where where are you most comfortable with, and how do you control a bigger guard? How how would you control? It? It's let's say let's say let's say if the bigger guard is a is a is a an attacker, somebody that wants to go to the basket all the time. How how would you defend that? I'm gonna play him. I'm gonna play him to his weak hand. So whatever hand I. I find out that he is, I'm gonna play him the opposite way. So if he's right-handed, I'm gonna push him to the left side. And if he wants to drive, I'm gonna let him drive. I'm gonna let him drive right into my big man. That that that's the goal. Okay. Okay. And what about what about a what about a, a guard that's a shooter? Like let's say, let's say somebody like um what's 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 son uh that they call him ISO Joe, Joe Johnson. What about somebody like him? Somebody like that that likes to shoot. But also like to post up and shoot over you. How how do you deal with that? Uh, with those type of guards, you got to be a little bit more physical with them. Them you can't let them get to there. You can't let a person like Joe Johnson get into the post. Cause once you let him get through there, it's over. So you're fronting him. You're denying him the basketball. You're denying him any type of post position. Hmm. Okay. So. De when you say denial, you 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 want to deny him the full ninety four feet. You want to deny him. No, you want to deny him any anything inside his mid range area where you where you establish he shoots. Joe Johnson, he shoots mid range jump shots. He's not really an outside shooter. He's a back down post fadeaway shooter. So I do not want to let him get anywhere near that. I would rather him get the ball in the three point line and then try to back down. Then we have some help other defenders and moving yeah, yeah. and stuff, but you do not want him to back you down in the post. All right, now I gotta flip it. What about what about you know guarding smaller guards, man? Guards that first first we'll talk about defending small fast guards, small quick guards, and then I want you to talk mm. about defending small guards that just like to shoot from anywhere. Uh defending small fast guards that like to go to the paint basically, right? Driving yeah. and stuff like that. So, so for instance, um, what's, uh, what's what's son from Old Westbury Cash? He he was a he was a really cool uh, a, a quick guard that used to like to go to the Baja. What how, how would yeah. you defend somebody like him? Uh, I'm just staying in front of him. Um, he's just as small as I am, so I still can be as physical as I am with a big guard. But my main objective is to just stay in front of him. Uh, also, you may want to send him to your big man because he's a guard. He's smaller, so your big man can just swat his shot. So you may want a, a person like that. You may want to, may want to send him to to your big man, and have your big man help you out on that one. Okay. And what about uh, what about guards that just like to shoot, man? A shooter, you want him. You want to run him off the three point line. So if he's getting <laughs> the ball at the three point line, you're running directly to him. You do not want him to catch the ball and shoot. You're running, you want him to put it on the floor and think about something else. So he gets the ball, you're running straight, straight to him. Now, here's a here's a really big thing that a lot of people may or may not, you know, really take into account, but the mental aspect and the mental approach of guarding somebody that's faster than you. Because I know a lot of times I, I wasn't a fast, I'm still not a fast person, you know, but I, I feel like my intelligence kind of, you know, I can, I can, I can balance it out, you know? So how, how do you approach it mentally? Uh, mentally, I mean, you just have to, you just have to stay focused and stay on your assignment. Stay on your assignment. Like coaches are going to set up, set up assignments for you, set up game plans for you. And you just have to stay within those boundaries. Say that one more time. You got to just stay within your boundaries. Like coaches are going to set up game plans and they're going to set up tools for you to be successful. So you have to stay within those boundaries when you're All approaching right. a game. Like 
when you're approaching the mental part of the game. You don't want to get too overwhelmed. You don't want to get too ahead of yourself. Also, you don't want to be too laid back. So you want to be steady, steady minded. Okay, so here's a here's a here's a quick scenario. You know that you gotta guard this guy. It, it, it's it, the game didn't even start yet. You know you gotta guard this guy. He's on a tear, putting up 25, 30 points a night. You know on Wednesday, you gotta deal with this man. What what's what's your approach? and your mental strength? Uh, uh, I'm, pro- I'm approaching it, the, like I said, the same way all the time. Like, I'm, I'm gonna study him, I'm gonna, what hand he shoots with, left or right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna know to force, if I should force him in. If he's a shooter, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let him come to my big man. If he's a the guard, I'm gonna also send him to my big man. I'm gonna stay in front. Oh, you're cutting in and out, bro. You, you can hear me? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you basically just playing playing the game steady minded. You just staying staying focused and staying on you know, just staying on cue, staying on staying on point. Okay, okay, okay. So I, I wanna I wanna talk a little bit about you know the importance of being a student athlete. Right. What? What? What's your? Cause I know you got your little one coming up behind you, and we hope you know that she gonna hoop. <laughs> I, know, I, know I had I had hopes and aspirations for my little one, and then you know she chose gymnastics instead, and that's cool. But um, to to Riley, man, what you know? What's what? What's the importance of like you know being a student athlete? Uh, I think yeah. If she wants to play ball, I mean, I want her to, of course, you know. I, I I definitely want her to uh, play ball, but if she wants to do something else, that's fine with me. Um, as far as being a student athlete, it is definitely hard. Um, going to class and working on your game. So I would want her to stay focused in school first. When it comes to sports and other activities, I want her to practice just as much and just as hard as she would in school. For kids that go to junior high schools or high schools that don't have teams, right? How, how can you, you know, how can you weigh in a little bit about um, the importance of joining like neighborhood tournaments or neighborhood CYOs or neighborhood uh, YMCAs? It's definitely important. That's actually how I, you know, how I learned to play ball. Basketball wasn't my first sport. I played baseball first, then I played football. So Basketball was was actually the third sport I played. So my my parents used to put me in junior Knicks. I used to do junior Knicks. We used to go, I used to just go to different parks with my friends. So we used to just tour every park and then, you know, people notice you. Yeah. So I remember one day I was I was at a park. I'm playing. One of my boys pulled up in the cab. Let's go right now. We gotta go. Go. We gotta go. We gotta go. Drove, drove me, put me in a tournament, threw a jersey right on, put me in the tournament, said, you got to guard him right here. <laughs> just like that. I've been playing. I was playing all day. Right. Sweaty. I'm tired. Just pulled up. You got to go ahead. You got to guard him. Locked him up, too. Yo, they, I kept just, me on, they kept me on the team. It's crazy. It was crazy. Yo, I, got I, a lot, I, I got a lot of stories like that. Yeah, and I'm going to need you to share some. I, I, feel like, I feel like that's so New York, though, right? Like, we just... It don't even matter, bro. You already in the park. You got your kicks on. Somebody said, yo, there's a game at 12 o'clock. I need you to come hoop. It's not yep, even a Let's job. go. Yep, let's go. It's funny. Not- Juice just called me. Juice just called me like, yo, I need, I'm going to need you December 26th. I'm like, all right, let's go. <laughs> For real? Let's go, man. Let's do it. So I still get that. Just now, I just got that call. Oh, man. Yo, so so I'm going to flip it a little bit again. Have, have you ever had anybody... That just that just worked you out. Somebody that's just a that that just was just flat out better than you and 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 put their hands on you and you kind of just had to like bow out like dang like this dude really he figured something out. You ever had you ever had one of those pre- one of those people? Yeah, yeah. High school I had this dude named Sebastian Telfair. Oh, oh. Um, I how, mean, how was that? <laughs> Let's just say he had his career high in high school on us. So wow. So for he for put up everybody, 62. He had what? He had 62. Oh. 
Dang. Yo, I, um, for, well, first thing for, for everybody that's born after the year 2000, <laughs> Sebastian Telfair is, uh, he's a, he's, he's along the lineage of Stefan Marbury. Um, he's a cousin of his, he's a, a, a Coney Island native, a Brooklyn product that ended up, you know, he went from high school to the league. Um, and he had, you know, a good, what, a good 10 years in the NBA, maybe? Yeah, he had a solid, not a solid seven, I would say. A solid seven uh, years in the NBA. And um, he was a really good dude. Yo, and speaking of Sebastian, I remember I, I didn't play against him, but I had the game in high school before his game. And um, I seen Quincy Doobie play. And, he, was also, and, he was also in, um, they used to go at it. They yeah. Used to play, yeah. Yo, I seen mm-hmm. Quincy Doobie. Man, I, I, there was this newspaper article that I saw, and I was like, man, like, they had him listed. He he shot 18 for 21 from behind 18, the yeah, ball. from three-pointers, three, three pointers, yeah. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. And, then, and you know, I, I read the article before I actually saw him play. So when he had the game before my game, everybody was just sitting there watching this dude go off. And he... In high school, to me, was like Steph Curry before Steph Curry. He and definitely he was. Everywhere. Definitely. I mean, literally one step over half court, and Quincy Doobie was letting it ring. Definitely. He had this. He had this little glove on his hand that he used to shoot yep. with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it, and it, 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 you you couldn't do nothing with him, man. You just couldn't do nothing with him. So. Yep. So for all the kids out there, um, you know, what give us give us a playground story that 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 you still remember to this day, good or bad. Hold on, P, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. While Terry is doing that, um, so Quincy Doobie, I, I believe he's a graduate of like 2002, 2003 from Grady. He put up okay, crazy numbers. Sebastian Telfair, I think he graduated high school in 2003 also. Nah, he graduated in 2004, the year, the year before me. I graduated in 2005. So he graduated in so, 04. So he came, oh yeah, he came into the league the year after Braun and Mello and him. Yes. Yep, okay. yep, yep. I think he was the year with, year with Dwight. Him and, him and Dwight came out the same year, I believe. Dwight Howard? Yeah. Yo, and it's funny too, because I, I was just playing um 2K yesterday, right? And hmm. they got they got Dwight Howard on like the two th- all the all 2010s team. And nah, he, that, that was the year they went to the chip. Kobe dunked on them. Wasn't it that year? Did he go to the chip as a rookie? Nah, he was like five year pro. He came in like 2005, 2004, 2005. So Dwight Howard came into the league 2005, and they got him in the all 2010s. Yeah, because I think he went to the chip that year. Oh, that makes sense. That makes. They went sense. to the chip, played the Lakers. I think Kobe. I think they played Kobe in them. Yeah, yeah, they got they got work, and 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 I especially remember that um, that finals because that was the whole Orlando uh, voyage where Skip to my Lou was holding it down the whole playoffs. Yes. Remember, because uh, what's his name got hurt? Who was the little point guard? Not DJ Augustine. Who came in before him? It was a little a little point guard that was was it DJ Augustine? Nah, he wasn't there yet. Mm-mm. It was somebody else in Orlando, and when he went hurt, when he, when he went down in the beginning of the playoffs, um, Skip took over, and I was like, yeah, Skip is the you know what I mean? Like I wanted Skip to really do his thing, and they just. They just they just took it from a man in the finals. They sat him. They yeah. put some back at the. I was like, man, that's why they lost. That's why they well, that him and Kobe, <laughs> obviously. Well, yeah, I'm about to say <laughs> can't can't really beat that guy. All right, so um, let's let's move on uh, into some other things, man. What's you you say that you still hoop now, right? So, yeah. what's it like balancing sports, fatherhood? Um, work, family, life in general. Like, how do you how do you keep basketball a constant? Man, basketball is that's my that's my baby. That's my baby before all the babies and everything. So, I usually I usually like set. I have to set out time now, so that's okay. like a separate activity, you know. 
Yeah. I, I'm doing this, 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 but on Wednesday I got I gotta I gotta go play ball or something like that. So just to at least blow off some kind of steam. Yeah, yeah, I need to. I need some type of I need some type of competition. Yeah. So yeah. So so for the kids, because obviously you know it's COVID, it's December, it's getting cold out. Like for, for kids that don't have that outlet, you know, like what are what are some things that you would recommend that they could do in the house just to either stay sane or to sharpen their game? I mean, there's, I mean, it's not really much you could do unless, I don't even know. If you live in, in your own house, you could bounce a basketball, there's, there's drills you can do. Um, if you don't have that luxury like me, I don't, I can't dribble a ball. Um, I just play around with the ball, throw it up in the air. Uh, my little girl got a little basketball hoop so I could shoot those little rubber basketballs around. Um, wow. Uh, I just, I, honestly, I just throw the ball around in my hands, throw it up in the air, just mess around like that. And then whenever I get a chance, I could go outside, walk around and dribble. You could always do that. doesn't matter the weather. That's you always true. dribble a basketball outside. That's true. Um, I remember being a kid and just layering up, just putting on long johns on top of long johns and then putting yep. the sweatpants on top of that. <laughs> yep. Know, and we, me, me and my friends, we used to have a, um, New Year's, every New Year's, no matter what it was, we had to be the first person to hit the jump shot, first person to hit the free throw, first person to hit the three, first person to do it, whether it was snow out or not. And uh, I remember E.T. saying he shoveled. We yeah. We shovel, bro. We played yeah, shovel too, with course. the ice. We played <laughs> on the ice, bro. We played on the ice. So. <laughs> and, you know, uh, one of the big things to me, because um, I'm a little bit of a nerd, too. I don't know if anybody out there nerds like I am, but to me anything basketball worked you know like if i yeah. watched it if i read about yep. it I was, I, was, a, I was also about to say that too yeah you could watch it watch the old old hardwood classic games those are good games. and you know they always gonna play the games that come down to the buzzer so it's gonna be exciting yeah and 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 especially to me i'm a person that that loves to read i was a reading kid um from young like i remember my mom used to make me read a thousand, 10,000 leagues under the sea. I used to read just pretty much everything. So when Slam Magazine came hey, out. Shut the fuck <laughs> up, you faggot whore. Shut Yo, the fuck kids up. kids in here. Who is that? Shut the flying fuck up, you. I'm just kidding, buddy. Is that you? Or is that you buddy? What? Who is that? I don't know who that is. We it's gotta... probably a troll or somebody playing on it. They need to mute their line or kick them out. You could kick them out. <laughs> Hey, what's that? Was that, was that mute, that person? mute everybody. Mute everybody. Yeah, I think I think I got them out. I don't know who that was. Is somebody by Craig something? Yeah. Yeah. Just said Quentin Craig. Well, I mean, you know, it. I, I don't. I don't want to talk bad about anybody, but if his if his jump shot ain't where it need to be. Then that's you know that that could be why yeah. <laughs> distractions <laughs> eliminate mm -hmm. distractions. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Exactly. Well, that's it. Uh, what, what was I what was I talking about just now? Oh, just just reading about basketball. Basketball literature to me was mad big. You know, yeah. like hearing about those old stories in the barbershops or talking to my uncles or reading slam reading newspaper articles from PSAL the next day and, 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 you know, the daily news or whatever, to me, basketball literature was just it. Yeah. yeah just not, kinda, you know, any, anything that I could get, man. So, um, what, are, what, are, what are some, uh, well, I, I want to talk about how basketball explains life to you. Or do you see it that way? Ba basketball is life. <laughs> talk about it. it it, it, I mean, it's not even basketball, honestly. It's sports in general. Because like I said, I played baseball and football before basketball. So um, it, it just, it keeps you grounded. It keeps me grounded. Um, I always, in order to play on a team, you had to have good grades, right? So it's right. like, it, it just kept everything in perspective for me. It just it, it just flowed. It just flowed. It just made everything easy. Schoolwork was easy because in order for me to, to do good in, in order for me to play ball, I had to do good in school. So 
That's true. And my parents wasn't having it. So <laughs> Right, 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 right. To so me, it was like, it's if like, you're doing bad, you're not playing ball, then I'm not playing ball. I can't see my friends. It was just one big ripple effect, you know? So That's true. That's true because it's like nothing moves without those grades. As yep. much as you want to hoop, as much as you want to you... go outside and be with your homies and, and play ball and all that, nothing moves exactly about those grades man that's exactly you know that's 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 just one big thing so another uh, i got another question for you how 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 has basketball like i guess influenced your life but on like maybe on, on any level on a traveling level on being able to relate to people level you, you know just how, how has basketball been a thing for you and and help you get from point a to point b I mean, like I said, it, it, it keeps me disciplined. Like you had to be like, I have to be on work at, at work on time. So basketball, you had to be at practice on time. Like it, it all relates to life. Like if you want to be good in basketball, you have to work hard. If you want to be a lawyer, you have to work hard. It all flows. Everything flows in life through sports and you know what I'm saying? So. And you know, for the kids out there that don't understand um, hard work, it, it it it's so cliche. I, I think the the term hard work is so cliche because it can be taken in any direction, you know. But it's like this: Allen Iverson, rumor has it, you know, he's he he would have workout days where he would just jump rope for six hours. That's yeah. a lot of jump rope. Yeah, that's a lot of jump. I I, I read something that said, uh, you know, Larry Bird used to shoot free throws until a hundred of them rolled back to him. If it didn't roll back, yeah. he started over. It, it, it was no good, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Not, not if it was just all net, not if it went in, not if it was off the backboard, not if it missed. Think about all of those things. Like, you go to the park and you shoot just to make it, right? Some people do best out of 10. Some people do 10 makes. For you to do a hundred makes that roll back to you roll that's yeah. crazy that's almost insane that's like how does that happen yeah that that's dedication man that's crazy that's, that's, dedication. that's dedication that's dedication and that's focus mm -hmm. right that's focus that's like almost nothing in the world exists for that time being except you and your free throws now remember remember that's just free throws yeah. We don't know how he trained for those threes. We don't know how he trained for those mid range. We don't know how he trained for backboard jump, you know, back shots off the glass. Cause that's my thing. Yeah. I love, I love a good backboard shot, you know, yeah. old school that way. Um, but man, that's, that's just tough. Just thinking about, you know, the processes. So that really makes you admire and respect somebody like LeBron who, whose body is just phenomenal for how many years? 15 plus 15 plus years that's and it, and it's more than just the gym before before the gym it starts with your diet diet yep i can't imagine lebron going to mcdonald's nope nope man ha, ha, have you were you one of those kids that needed to i was one of those kids that needed to die out you know i i always had that extra weight <laughs> you know but uh, uh, unfortunately Nah, I could, I could, I could, uh, survival for now, ladies. Yeah, I could, yeah, <laughs> I could eat whatever, still stay slim. I was one of those, yeah, I'm one of those people. And Sorry, you, man. One, one of those, one of those guys that could just eat, you know, just eat anything and, and, and keep it pushing. Um, yeah, I, so I want, I want you to, I want you to, to talk a little bit intimately about, you know, if you had a, uh, 11 year old, 12 year old. Um, you, right? Short, undersized, little thin, um, but experienced in football and baseball and, and driven by your parents and things of that nature. What would, if you could tell 11 year old you anything right now, what would you tell you when it comes to basketball? I would play in more tournaments. I, I think I, I didn't, I think personally, I didn't play as much. Remember, I, I I feel like I started off late, later than a lot of people who play basketball a lot. So I would say playing 
play in a lot of tournaments, get a lot of exposure. That's what I would have done. Tournaments, exposure. Now, what? But what about now in the in the year in the age of social media? Like, I feel like you that, you're that to, to me, that. it's even easier now because you could just record yourself playing. Uh, so, and, so and, now and just, just post and just post it, and, and, and somebody somewhere is gonna see it. Back then, we had what I had. I had my I had my practice on on VHS. Mm. So. Mm. Mm. All right, let's take a break real quick. I want to ask um I want to ask the audience out there. Yo, so like I said, this is my for everybody that joined in after his 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 wonderful introduction. Um, this is my main man Terry Brown. Brown, I I went to college with him, played basketball with him. Um, from you know college on. Uh, anybody that has any questions for my main man Terry, point guard, a scoring aficionado. Uh, how 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 we looking out there? Any one of my Zacks. Zach, I got any questions for my main man Terry? Uh, any questions? Yeah. No, not yet. Well, how you <laughs> feeling so far? How how you feeling about the information you're receiving so far? Um, I'm feeling like very like um very like informed right now. So, Zach, what what um what do you feel like you need to work on? My handles, hundred percent. Hundred percent, your handles. Um, T, you got you got some advice for some for for somebody that doesn't need to work on a handle. Yeah, of course. What what um, Zach? What handle you? Right hand or left hand? I'm right handed. Um, I want sorry. you to dribble, dribble all the time with your left hand. It should feel the same exact way as you dribble with your right hand. Yeah, cause like um, my 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 right hand is my like my strongest hand. Strong hand, yeah. You want to get your left hand to be just as good as your right. And that's, you know, like you said earlier in the in the text, that's um that's about dedication, you know, just being being in tune with the idea of your weaknesses, right? So if your left hand is your weakness, um it's it, it it's going to take a different you to push yourself to really work on that left hand. And your left hand is important. You need that because like Terry said earlier, he said the first thing I'm gonna do to a bigger guard is push him to his off hand, right? So okay, if, and yep. if if, yeah. if I'm gonna send him to, to the hand that I think is his worst hand. That's it. And and if your left hand is food, it's over. It's over. Cause I, I can tell, you know, just like I'm pretty sure Terry too, I can tell as soon as you dribble that basketball, I, I yep. know exactly what hand you are, how good you are with that other hand, and how much pain you can take or can't. So um, I want to I wanna talk about uh, Zach, the other Zach. Zach. You have questions about playing football. Talk to us, Zach. Yeah, I wanted to know what it was like, um, what it was like playing that sport. Playing football. Playing football that, so let, let's talk about let's talk about oh yeah somebody said did playing basketball uh baseball and football help you become a better basketball player coco i see you thank you so t talk a little bit about that uh yeah definitely did um my hand eye coordination was a lot better from playing baseball because baseball it takes a lot of hand eye coordination um i would say speed quickness and agility was from football because I, I was playing wide receiver, so you, you have to make a lot of cuts, dips. Um, yeah, so all around, yeah, it did make me a better basketball player. And and football also brought that physicality to me. So I could be very physical because I, I, I played football. So the physical effect, um, Zach, that football has on basketball, I actually uh, had the same feel. And what, one thing about that is that since I wasn't a fast basketball player, being physical kind of even, you know, a lot of things out for me. So if I was, you know, dealing with somebody that's in front of me, that's a little bit faster than me, as soon as he made a, a, a crossover or something, I made sure he felt these paws, <laughs> you know, not, not exactly. in a harmful way to foul anybody, but just to let him know that I was there a little bit. And football... Football kind of erases that fear um, if you have one of physical contact. Because I know a lot of I know a lot of 
ball players have a physical contact uh, fear to a certain level. But when you play football and you put the, that equipment on, um, you know it's 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 uh it's it's a different ball game. Oh, thank you. I didn't know that you was bringing my my, my football trophy that I announced. <laughs> That I that I announced in the chat. I didn't realize that you put that there. So for everybody that needs to see it, this is 1999 Rosedale Jets. And how'd you win it? How'd you win it? Oh, I beat the Skyhawks. <laughs> uh huh. Brooklyn Skyhawks. I beat and with the what? Brooklyn offense Skyhawks. or defense? What won it? Offense huh? or defense? What won it? Oh man. Well, if you're asking me, since I was a quarterback, I'm gonna go on and say offense. But if you want me to be realistic, I'm gonna go on and say the defense went and got it because. You know the hard, the hardest part about it was 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 shutting down the Skyhawks uh, backfield. They had um they had somebody that is actually featured on the on 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 the locker room in a couple of weeks. He's now a a, a, a he's a nurse. Um, his name is his name is uh, JJ. We call him JJ. But his also backfield partner was uh, Smitty. And they had a crazy backfield, man. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, you know, Smitty had to leave the game for, you know, reasons that we're not going to talk about. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but but we're going to take the win nonetheless. And, uh, you know, um, JJ had to deal with us, man. And, <laughs> and we walked away with that trophy. And every time I see him, I make sure I rub it in. I take pictures with it. I, I tell him, I said, man, it's a Rosedale Jets intermediate, you know, Division trophy and all that good stuff. So yeah, I can't, oh, find, I can't find my my rich. I can't find my Ridgedale championship jacket right now, but Ridgedale won a the check. Brewers, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh man, that's we tough. play um College Point, baby. Oh, I remember co- y'all beat College Point. Yeah. Yo, we had some. We had some running back, bro. His name was Flash. Let's just say that. Uh-huh. Wow. I remember um the team to beat back then was uh Lynn Vets. Springfield. Well Mons yeah. of Springfield. I, I guess the I think they had their era. The rifle. Yep, Spring. Yep, the rifle. Springfield yep. Rifles. Every everybody who on that team was six one. We beat we beat the rifles in the playoffs. Get, in, in the playoffs to get to the Skyhawks. And yep. then we beat them too. And Rifles and Skyhawks was number one and two in the league that year. Yep. Word. So, so my main man Zach, um, if you're asking how it translates, you know, um, everything everything works with it. You know, every everything swims into one another. So I want to talk about a couple of these questions. That sorry guys, my nose is running. I I think I got a little change of weather, so part of my sniffles. But um, I wanted to Zach. Can you asked, hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I'm just going through the comments. I want to respond to Zach. Um, he said, he said, uh, hold on. He said, before I even knew to play basketball, I played soccer. Now, soccer is a really good way to translate basketball, man, because of the footwork. What you think, T? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, like one of the most important things was um the footwork, because like, because like I need a fancy footwork to like to like to score a goal oh, and, soft, and do defense. Yeah, um, and 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 foot and well, first of all, soccer almost translates into anything because you could take soccer and, it, it's, and it's also very physical too. I would think so. I've never mm-hmm. played soccer like that, but just seeing some highlights, they get busy. Yeah, no, nah, it's physical, man. And, and stamina, stamina and speed is is key to, in soccer, I think. Yeah, yeah, because there's no timeouts in soccer, right? That's true. Mm-mm, that's true. Yeah, there's no timeouts in soccer, so you definitely got to be in shape. And the footwork for soccer is tough, especially when I heard um I heard Kobe talk about the soccer influence on his basketball shoe, right? Because he was really the first one to really wear a low cut basketball shoe on the mm-hmm. court. A lot yep. of people didn't do that. Yep. You know, a lot of people didn't do that. And he explained it to a, a degree where he said, you know, there's more torque on your ankles on the grass with cleats on and soccer players play with, you know, low cut shoes. So basketball should be a little bit easier. I don't I, know how that I, translated I, into him tearing his ACL. Maybe. Just 
Uh, I think, don't think so. Well, let's think about it this way. He came out with the low cut shoe. He tore his ACL. And then his very next shoe was a really high cut sneaker. It literally yeah, covered the, the whole ankle. It was like a pair of six inch Tims from back in the day. Yeah, it did. But I only think he made that because of the injury. I don't think he made that because it was actually basketball ready. I, I, I agree with Kobe, though, as far as low cut, because I do wear low cut. You rather it, a low it, cut it, sneaker? I rather low cut. I could, I could maneuver better. I feel lighter on my feet. Huh, that's rather interesting. And and it, I'm not saying it doesn't make sense because whatever feels comfortable to you obviously makes sense. But to me, I just feel like I had so many ankle injuries that a low cut sneaker is just like, man, that's you just asking for it, in my opinion. I don't know. You've had so many injuries and you've had a high cut sneaker. So what does that say? That's a really good way of looking at it, too. <laughs> If I get a no if I no just the ankle in a low cut sneaker, my ankle might fall <laughs> off. That'd be it. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, they're, they're definitely better. I've never, I've never turned my ankle. I usually may I, I strap up. Um, I put like a high sock and another sock underneath. To, I guess to, to a keep, lot of to keep that stability, but low, yeah, they, you feel way lighter. Okay, so um, we got another question. Kwasi in the crowd asked, uh, Terry, how do you work on your jump shot? Uh, the honest way is I shoot, I shoot it a lot. But um, mechanics wise, you know, you just wanna you just wanna practice right in front of the rim. You wanna shoot over the top of the rim, and you wanna have you wanna have your um your hand, your palms on the ball. I wish I could show you guys. Let me see if I could show you guys. You can see? see? Yeah. Cool. Girl dad. <laughs> so you wanna have you wanna have your fingers on the ball like this. Shout out to all of the pink basketballs in the house for the girl dads. <laughs> so if I can show you like that, you wanna have your fingers distant. I usually you're not supposed to have your thumb. I was taught not to have your thumb on the basketball, but my hands are so small that it has to be there. So when my hand, when I catch the ball, my thumb is on it. But when I release the basketball, my thumb is not on the ball. So I'll catch it and I'll place my thumb here. But once I'm releasing, I'm let my thumb is not on the ball. My shooting thumb is not on the ball. Okay. That makes I'm sense. using my, I'm using my left hand to guide the basketball. Like her body is a okay. Yes. So left hand is guiding. Once, like once I'm releasing the ball, I'm just letting my left hand off the basketball, and then I'm flicking my wrist for rotation. And you also want to shoot over the top of the rim with rotation. Okay. Shoot over the top of the rim with look. All right. Um, we we have we have. Let me see if I can get through. Okay. So, Vima Beauty asked. What was just what was your most significant moment in your basketball career? Ooh, uh, I don't know. I, I've I've had a lot of moments. Um I used to play in the tournament Brevoid, which is in Brooklyn. Uh-huh. Uh, Fab Fab up there. So uh, we uh we had a game. I think it was first round playoffs. And back in the day when you wasn't from that area, they gave you a hard time. Man. So so I remember um I don't know how they figured it out, but they figured out I had asthma. So <laughs> So I get I get on the court, we running around and they start lighting the grill. So the the the, the smoke from the grill it's coming on the court and I'm running Get up and down the court. Here. I swear to you, I'm running up and down the court, but my, like, I, the, it, it's just messing with my lungs, you know? So I'm running up and down the court. Um, I start getting winded quick. So my, um, my coach took me out at the time and he was like, yo, what's wrong with you? I was like, I got asthma. He's like, what? Cause I never told him. So then he's like, all right. I forgot, I forgot what ended up happening, but they there was no more smoke. 
ended up getting on the court. We lost by four. I had 45. Wow. And we lost, yeah. I had 45, and my, one of my teammates had 35, and we lost. <laughs> Dang. So you had 45, a teammate had 35, and y'all lost because they lit we the lost, grill. We lost, yeah. We lost by four. Dang. Yeah, I remember, mm -hmm. I, yeah, those, those, those games – I definitely tell. I remember um, playing in BRC, and and for those of y'all that don't know what BRC is, that's Brownsville Rec Center. And I remember, you know, if you was from anywhere but Brownsville, and you won, they was gonna make it real hard for you to leave the gym. They was gonna make it real hard for you to leave the gym because once you empty out in BRC, it's either you gonna go on Linden Boulevard or you gonna try to get to one of them back blocks. But it's gonna be it's, it's tough. I got story. We went. I had a game in Lafayette. Oh uh -huh. goodness, man! It, the the heck was there. It. it was it was crazy, bro. We get there first off. We get there. The gym. The lights is dark. It's dark in there, bro. They they get us. They put us in a room to get dressed. It's freezing cold. We get on a court. We all ice cold. You got hecklers in the crowd. Like yo, you bet. If you score, bro, you're not you're not leave you're not leaving here. Like you're this not getting basketball. out of here. It, it, I'm like, I look at my team. I'm like, is he he really serious? And keep and what you call it? That was in where was that? Um, Marlboro Project. So Marlboro hmm. Project is right over there. So you wasn't really trying to have no no issues with them over there, man. Those games was tough. Going to Lincoln, going to Grady. Well, not yeah. going to them because they they was gonna smack us anyway. So they didn't really care. Lincoln but, and Grady? Yeah, they, they was gonna blow us out. They had yeah. they had all the stars there. Yeah. yeah, Lincoln, Grady. Um, who else was powerhouses back then? In my division, it was just Lincoln and Grady. Then they had like we had like Sheet Bay, they was good and bad sometimes. I remember Clinton um, in the Bronx was good at one point. Yeah, we, we actually I think nah, we ain't played them. Uh Hatton Center had their era. I think Cam didn't Cam and, and Mace go to Go to Lincoln's uh, Manhattan Center for high school basketball. I think so. I think so. Back back then, yeah. Oh, I remember. Man. I remember another game too, bro. We went to Staten Island. Uh huh. <laughs> we had to go play play Tottenville. Oh, that's a different so kind we, of anger, bro. There's not a white. We went there. Time. That's what I'm saying. We went there. He's looking. Oh yeah, yeah. This is a this is easy. Bro, when I told you they was backdoor cutting, three-point draining, I'm like, oh, my goodness, bro. I I never got school like that. And bad, like, they just out everything. Wow. They played better defense. They shot better. They backdoor cut. Every mm -hmm. they passed, they were so unselfish. Like, it was crazy. Dang. So we have... We have uh, two questions in the crowd. One, um, do you have any videos of your games up maybe on YouTube? That's the first nah. question. The second question is, have you ever played in the Kangaroo Classic? No, never played in Kangaroo Classic. And I don't have... I have clips of me playing like rec games on video on YouTube, not like high school games. But I do have clips of me dribbling. I, I'll um, I wonder if I could put it. I'll send it to PJ. He can give it to you guys. Send it to you guys. But All I right. definitely have. Yeah, I have YouTube clips. Yeah. All right. So my main man, uh, Zach Attack. He said his first ankle breaker was in the sixth grade. Now I don't know if that was his ankle that was being broken or if he broke somebody else's ankle. Uh, Zach, you wanna you wanna clarify this for us? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> if it was your ankles, man, I, I feel you. Man, know. you Hey, you should you should never you should never nah, told us if it was like, your ankles, man. <laughs> nah, like, nah, chill, 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 just chill, chill. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. Nah, I'm saying like I broke somebody's ankles when I was sixth grade. Woo! How did that happen? Let us know. How how did it unfold, Zach? So like, so like, um, <clears throat> so like it was um, I think it was like in um the first play. Uh huh. Uh, when I was like, it was like um a three v three, right? Uh huh. So like, um, so like somebody um passed me the ball. I was dribbling up when I saw somebody, and then then after I just 
I just did a crossover. Right to left or left to right? Right to left. Oh. Like right back. Oh. It was like it was a snatch back. And then after like he just fell. He just I dropped him. Uh, so so my now, question to you when you, you say know, snatch back, was it a Iverson cross or was it a, a sham guard snatch back cross? What was that? It was like a type of like a Iverson crossover, which like it was like, I can show you. I can show you. Can I show you? Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, okay, hold it for me, please. Uh, turn it on. How do, how do I, how do I, do I, do I, do I add spotlight, replace spotlight, pin? You could, how do I, how do I highlight Zach attack? You could probably just, just click, just, yeah, pin him. Yeah, pin him, pin him. All right. Yeah. Boom. There we go. All right, Zach, you live. So it's like, it was like, it was like this. Oh. It was like, hold on. Let me do it better in my side. Show it to us one more time. Oh, okay. Okay. This. Oh, and shout out to your camera person that's holding it down, too. That's just really mm -hmm. good. <laughs> I see you, Zach. Yeah. Nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so Zach, Zach hit us with the one, two. We pulled it that, back. That, that, that was a snatch, snatch back. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Catch a lot of people with that. You catch a lot of people with that. All right, huh? all right. Let me. Oh snap! I could pin y'all both at the same time. That's popping. Oh, there you go. I'm, I'm, I'm learning something new on the fly, on this Zoom shenanigans all right so t it is 7 53 that means that uh we're about to close out soon but i do have a couple questions for you all right and these yes, questions are gonna be, they're going to be quick questions and they require quick answers all right got it all right let's start so don't go block block handles of defense defense speed or power speed Basketball IQ or height? Basketball IQ. That's big. Kobe or LeBron? Kobe. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Steph or Clay? You know what? A lot of people, everybody say Steph, right? Uh-huh. So I'm gonna say Steph too. I'm gonna say Steph ah, too. that a boy, that a boy. All right, uh, Maya Moore or Diana Taurasi? The female goat, Diana. Ah, pop it. All right, would you rather know? How, would you rather fly or disappear on the court? That's a good one. I, I'd rather disappear. I I would think so too. All right, uh, finish this sentence for me. I wish coaches would. Coach more. I wish point guards would. Shoot more. I wish shooters would. Pass more. I wish big men would. Grab the rebound and kick it out to me. Ah, I wish my mom would. Cook something for me. Uh, I wish the NCAA would. Pay their players more. Pay their players, period. Uh, I wish the WNBA would. Pay them girls more, man. I wish the NBA would. Start up already. Uh, I wish I could. Be in the league. <laughs> All right, cool. everybody give it up for Terry, y'all. Everybody give it up for T. Yeah. Appreciate Woo, it, T. Terry. Appreciate it. Yeah, Appreciate it. All Let right. And um, and, and on behalf of Brackenville Books, I do have to ask a question. Matter of fact, I'm going to let Terry ask this question. So Terry's going to come up with a question, guys. And um, the proper answer is going to win you guys a, a, a Castro and Sap novel. The first novel off the Brackenville Books line, um, T. I want you to give I want you to give the audience out there a tough basketball question to answer, and uh, we're gonna have everybody uh, 
comment in the comments or the first person to shout the answer, uh, win a win a book before Christmas. What y'all got? What you got? T, come up with something. Give me some. Mm. Who was the first person? Who, who was the who was to? who was the first pick? Give us something. Who yeah? Who was the number one pick in the two thousand three NBA draft? Oh, I'm gonna type that in the comments. Everybody, I got thirty seconds. We got twenty seconds left. We got 10 seconds left. We need full names. <laughs> the 2000 and what? 2003. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. I got it. I got it. I got it. LeBron James. Oh. Huh? LeBron James. Oh! <laughs> we have a 7.57 p.m. tie between Courtney Johnson and Zach. LeBron James. Very good. All right. Clap it up, y'all. Yo, T, you one of my dear yeah. brothers, man. I love you, bro. It's always a pleasure hooping with you, talking to you, and all that I good stuff. Hopefully, um, we, we, the next Tyler training camp, we'll be able to link up so that we can we can do it by your spot. What you think? Exactly. Yes, sir. And I'm I'm gonna send you the um I'm gonna send you the YouTube highlights. Oh, perfect. And I'm a I'm gonna put it in the locker room. Oh, all right. So speaking on the 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 highlights. So guys, something was brought to my attention today that I have to um that I have to speak on. So although we have this locker room every Monday night at seven o'clock, I upload different things into the locker room all week. All right. So when Terry sent me those clips, I'll be able to upload his clips. Um, I put Iverson clips in there. I put Kobe, um, Diana Tarot, you know, all, all kinds of different basketball things uh, because we just that that's what the locker room is. It's a place of love for the game, you know, so you don't you guys also y'all don't have to wait for me to upload things into the into the locker room. If you have things that you want to post that you think might be cool, if you have people that you want to, you know, tell about that want to join um, tell them to join the locker room. It's just a hub. This is a barbershop. This is a clubhouse. This is a locker room for everybody that just love the game, man. And I, and I really want to thank everybody out there for not only joining the locker room, but being a part of, you know, these early hey, Riley. Books, uh, stages. So congratulations to Zach for winning this Castro and Sat book. It will be in the mail uh, uh, shortly. And um, thank you, Courtney, for uh, letting Zach have the tiebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure, man. I love you, bro. All right. Thank Everybody, you, guys. Stay tuned all week. Be in the locker room. Peace, y'all. All right. Take Later. care, family. All Later. right. Peace out. Good night. Good night.